Hello, today is the uh, 9th, I think, of uh, Friday of December of 2011, and uh, I want to comment on uh, yesterday's debacle, the whole season debacle on the Browns of Cleveland. I think Pat Shermer's the coach. I'm not really calling him out by any means, but, but, I'll explain to you why your team sucks so badly and some obvious coaching mistakes and yeah I, I could be this Monday morning quarterback and just criticize all that I want but I know what I'm saying or I'm confident that I know what I'm saying so let's get started why in the world did Peyton Hillis get hurt this year no, no I can't say that in a sense because everyone or a lot of people get hurt in pro football but we should learn from the Buffalo Bills they didn't run running back by committee instead. They said, run it, Fred Jackson. Run it, run it, run it, run it. 25, 30, 100 carries a game. Well, not 100, but 25, 30. He's out for the year. That's what I like about running back by committee. It kind of reduces injuries. And Payton Hillis is a better fullback, but not want to go there. I want to talk about what happened directly last night. Now, James Harrison had a vicious hit on Colt McCoy and James Harrison said today or last night or at some point after the game that he felt that because McCoy was there the quarterback he's treated like a running back or wide receiver which is true and that it was not a late hit which again is true but it was a helmet on helmet now a lot of people talk about pro football and such as if you know what it, it's a barbaric sport there's a lot of injuries so the way I look at it with uh, the way things are currently moving on, we need one of two things to happen. Either A, the league has to get really wimpy and eliminate the violence, if you will. Or B, the one I like, the medicine. The medical community, heck, a player gets hit with concu a concussion, fix them better than we've ever fixed them before. It's something like that. But McCoy got hit. It looks like a concussion. Now, as he went out, Seneca Wallace comes in, and I think Seneca Wallace is a tremendous athlete because he's a very good quarterback as far as he's a good thrower. He can run the ball, and he can catch the ball. He's an amazing guy to have, especially when you run Wildcat, which you haven't run. You have the team, too, but Josh Cribbs, you have the team to run it, but you, you, you don't do it. But what you didn't do also is what I call quarterback by committee. And not many people know about it because it's not being done right now in professional football. Now, I, I admit it would be kind of stupid for some teams to work with both quarterbacks. Uh, an example of this might be Tony Romo with, with John Kitna in Dallas. Mm, no, we'll just go with Tony Romo, thank you. But in a situation here with Colt McCoy. Who's a better quarterback, Colt McCoy or Seneca Wallace? And they're both healthy, that is. I, I, I don't know. So wh why not play both of them? But in, get a situation here where McCoy gets injured, Seneca Wallace first play, great pass, great reception, like a 14, 12, 15-yard play, whatever, I don't know. And then Colt McCoy comes back in the game after that injury. That's insane. It's, ins it's totally, totally insane. I understand sometimes in the past where I've seen maybe, maybe say Tom Brady gets injured and they put in whoever their backup happens to be and then Brady might come back. Well, there's a difference within the two quarterbacks. This is inexcusable. Because I know I've heard before about profession, but the winners in sports are the ones that use the team aspect and not the I aspect. And I'm not seeing it. I see 32 of the 32 teams with a number one quarterback and a second guy they couldn't care less about. Thank you for watching.